everyone! Welcome to episode number 658 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. I have a super fun episode lined up for you this week. My guest is Matthias Wagner, CEO of Flux. Matthias and I chat about the path forward for electronic engineering and why hardware innovation is more important than ever before. Flux's exciting agenic AI updates and what the future looks like for this exciting browser-based PCB design tool. Also this week, I check out a new kind of super cool ultrasound controlled artificial muscles developed by a team of researchers at ETH Zurich. So without further ado, please welcome Matthias to Fish Fry. Hi, Matthias. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so first off, since it's been a little while since you guys have been on Fish Fry, tell me a little bit about Flux. Yeah, I'm happy to. So Flux is an AI hardware engineer, right? And I think the big difference from last time we talked is that, you know, we've been making much progress over the last two years in helping users with solving tasks with AI to solving whole problems. I'm excited to tell you more about this today. Excellent. Okay, so first off, Talk to me about Flux's vision for ultimate customization. Yeah, absolutely. So the big dream we have here is if you think about how like a 12-year-old kid today can write an iPhone app and distribute that, right, and access like a huge audience, we want to enable people like that to build things like their own iPhone, right, like anything you can dream of and turn into a prompt. You know, we can send you the manufactured piece of hardware within a week or two to your doorstep, right? And so a full customization of anything electronics and hardware. That's fantastic. So we have talked a lot about the future of electronic engineering and how it will hinge on hardware innovation here on Fish Fry. So, Matthias, do you agree with that? And if so, what do you think needs to be done to make this hardware innovation happen? Yeah, great question. I mean, look, companies like us, right, we're working hard on like solving the design piece of hardware, right? If you think about CAD software, that's really not the kind of software that most people in the world want to use, right? It's even hard to use for like trained engineers. And so we're working on the stream of going from like a prompt to a fully designed piece of hardware that you can manufacture. But, you know, if you look at the whole supply chain here now, right, I think there's so many opportunities to further automate and simplify the supply chain. Like we're very focused, for example, right now on just pure electronics and not enclosures, but in enclosure design too, there's lots of opportunities, right? Like for example, 3D printing. 3D printing has been huge over the past decade for prototyping, but has yet to find its way into mass manufacturing. Even the advantages are so obvious, right? And so I think bringing all these things together that you can truly go from like a design you made wherever you are in the world to get back like a fully assembled manufactured piece of hardware that's ready to go, right? I think that's the gap we have yet to close here over the next years. So. Flux has some exciting agenic AI updates. So can you tell me about those? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, like I said earlier, the past years we've launched like a lot of features that help solve tasks for users. And a task might be like, hey, look, find me a component with these characteristics or find a drop and replacement for this IC at a cheaper price, right? And with the new generation of AI agents they've launched over the last couple of weeks, you can, we're now moving to like solving problems for users. So a problem might be, hey, look, I need to measure the water flow rate at a well, on a property. And the agent can go in and be like, okay, how could we do this? And the agent is going to decide, look, we're going to use here an MCU-based solution, maybe an ESP32. We're going to use this sensor and put this all together for the user so that the user then only has to review the final design and then can send it to manufacturing. And so that's like the next level of abstraction we've been bringing to users everywhere in the world most recently. Fantastic. Okay. So Matthias, what does the future look like for Flux? The future for Flux, I mean, I think, you know, we're democratizing making electronics at a rapid pace, right, and getting more and more. Before, you had to be an absolute expert to make a PCB board. That's less true every day now, right, that people in adjacent roles, you know, maybe like firmware engineers, you know, or mechanical engineers can even make their own PCB boards and can make that easily on the side without having to go so deep. Again, by going from prompt to a finished design PCB board that you can send to manufacturing. And so that's what we're very focused on, very excited about here to bring to people. 
Fantastic. All right, Mateus, it's time for your off the cuff question. So if you could have a meal with one person alive or dead, who would it be? Ah, good question. Um, you know, I'm going to go here outside of the context. I think I would, you know, like Rick Rubin would be cool to have dinner with. I agree. He would be cool to have dinner with. Great answer. All right. Well, Mateus, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much, Amelia. Did you hear about the new class of artificial muscles developed by a team of researchers at ETH Zurich? Get this, these artificial muscles developed by Daniel Ahmed, professor of acoustic robotics for life sciences and healthcare, and his team contain micro bubbles that can be controlled by ultrasound. All right, so the researchers developed these artificial muscles by creating a silicone membrane with a specific microstructure using a casting mold. This membrane features numerous pores on its underside, which are approximately 100 micrometers in both depth and diameter, which is around the width of a human hair. Now, when this membrane is submerged in water, these pores effectively trap tiny microbubbles. When these microbubbles are subjected to sound waves, that's when the magic happens. <laughs> these microbubbles actually begin to oscillate, and then that generates a directed flow that moves the muscle. The precise control over the microbubble's size, shape, and positioning allows for a range of movements, from uniform curving to wave-like patterns. And the reaction time is amazing. These muscles react within milliseconds and can be controlled wirelessly. The experiments this team did were super fun. One experiment included a soft miniature gripper arm. With this gripper arm, they were able to gently trap a zebrafish larva in water and then release it again. In another experiment, they developed a miniature cable-free robot that is around four centimeters wide that mimics a stingray's undulatory movements. This robot uses two artificial muscles to replicate the pectoral fin function of the stingray. When these artificial muscles are stimulated by ultrasound, they move in that kind of motion, allowing the robot to glide through the water. And where would you imagine these tiny stingray robots would be useful? Did you say the digestive system? <laughs> then you would be right. Looking ahead, these stingray bots, as the researchers call them, could be used in your gastrointestinal tract. Potential applications could include precise medication delivery or aiding in minimally invasive procedures. These researchers have already envisioned how a stingray bot could reach the stomach, by rolling it up and encasing it in a specifically designed capsule that the patient would swallow and then dissolve in the stomach. This team has also developed a small wheel-shaped silicone structure that can be propelled by ultrasound as well. This device uses microbubbles of varying sizes. And during these experiments, using a pig intestine, these researchers were able to successfully demonstrate that this solution could navigate the complex areas of the intestine by sequentially stimulating those different sized microbubbles. San Chi, a former doctoral student under Ahmed and lead author of this study, highlighted the difficulty of this environment, saying, the intestine is a particularly complex environment because it is narrow, curved, and irregular. He also added, 
It was therefore particularly impressive that our wheel robot was actually able to move in there. Even further, these researchers have also developed new innovative medical patches that can adhere to curved surfaces through ultrasound activation. These patches, which can enable precise drug delivery, can also be customizable for a variety of tissue types. These patches could also potentially offer innovative treatment for tumors and scars. So is this new micro bubble enhanced artificial muscle technology ready for prime time? Absolutely not. <laughs> it is steadfast in the lab for now. But this kind of artificial muscle technology could have a wide variety of potential applications. This team contends that in the long term, these soft artificial muscles could help make procedures less invasive and could also help administer medication more precisely. This could be a very promising tool, especially for medical applications, with a combination of biocompatibility with flexibility and wireless control. Even though this kind of acoustically controlled muscle technology is only in its infancy now, I'd say this research is showing a lot of promise. Professor Daniel Ahmed sums up the potential of their research like this. We started by conducting fundamental research before demonstrating the versatility of these artificial muscles, with applications ranging from drug delivery to locomotion and gastrointestinal tract to cardiac patches. Super cool, right? If you'd like even more information about these artificial muscles developed at ETH Zurich or more information about Flux, including a new feature article by my fellow EE Journal editor Max Maxfield called Make It So, Agenic AI Comes to Flux. I've included a slew of links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal if LinkedIn is more your thing. I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we are also on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. And we also have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash EE Journal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series, hosted by me, and our animated series called Libby's Lab. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of November 14th, 2025, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.